welcome to today's video and we are starting off bright and early it is 7 59 about to hit 8 a.m and i don't know if you can see from all the way up here but Falstor is literally the first at the line for a practice lap so uh the moment that ticks over eight i guess they're gonna tell him he's good to go oh there he goes Definitely a very interesting track. Well, first one to put down some lines. I think that's pretty cool. So Falstall just changed out his gearing. He's running a 4.7 rear end now. Much better. Taking a quick moment to tell you about today's video sponsor, which is Lucky Labo. And if you don't know who Lucky Labo is, they are a specialty online retail solution for authentic JDM goods with laser focus on the Sylvian Skyline platforms. Vintage, authentic, and quirky items that highlight and show reverence for history and inspire owners to be unique. And I know that that spool sounds epic, but let me show you one of their really cool products. This is their AC drink holder. And this may look familiar to you initial D fans out there because this was inspired off the very same ones that were in Takumi's Hachiroku. That aside, I really like this particular one because it's not cheap. It's got metal clips in the back, no plastic ones. It's got the little stopper here so you can use little cans or bigger drinks. And if you still want cold AC, you just flip that up and it flows straight through. So head to luckylabo.com and get yourself one of these drink holders so then your Eurobeat can truly be intensified and you can also go check out some of their other cool products on their site. So with that guys, support the companies that support me. Once again, head to luckylabo.com and thank you Lucky Labo for sponsoring this video. Got the MJ Style 34 coming up here. So good to see a Coupe 34. Everyone's still feeling out the track. This practice is pretty important. It seems like a lot of people have had to change diff gearing and a whole bunch of stuff like that so that uh, they're ready, like their car's set up for this. You gotta realize coming in here uphill and everything, it really slows you down. So you need to have the gearing to push through all the way around. You guys are in for a treat because Ueo is about to do a lap. Here comes the smoke screen. Literally, it's straight up burnout the whole way. Jeez. So it is finally time for qualifying and this is very important. You get two chances and uh, obviously the most points that you make is gonna then set you up in the ladder for top 32. Uh, so really hoping Falstall does really, really well. He should, he was doing some really good practice runs and whatnot. But also I wanna keep tabs on some of the other friends that are driving today like Bucky and stuff like that. And hopefully they do well as well because if they all do well, it's gonna be one hell of some cool battles coming up. I'm excited. So Falstall's about to head out for qualifying. I wanna see 90 plus. You got this man, kill it. All right, so here comes Bucky. Hopefully he does well. Really good control and he hit pretty much every zone from what I saw. Alright, here comes Fausto. Nice. 
good safe run for the first one. Bucky for his second qualifying run. A lot of clutch work he used there. Very Japanese like kind of style of driving. Here comes Felstor. Go, buddy. Yo! Yo! Yeah! Yo! He filled that out his own really good this time. So some people still got to do their final qualification round. Um, but I figured now would be a really good opportunity to do a bit of a pit walk because a lot of the drivers are finished here and Dude, this BMW we're seeing so many. I don't know the chassis uh, Model myself because I'm not much of a BMW person. I'm getting there. I'm learning. Thanks to you guys in the comment section But I have seen the chassis used a lot now in drifting which is pretty exciting. Um, it seems like it's pretty well balanced uh, I've definitely been noticing a lot more uh, teams getting the same chassis and uh making some stuff work with it. Looks like he's running some, maybe a V8. Um, it's middle mounted there, so it could be V6 or V8. Hopefully we get to see that hood pop later on. Then over here, we got this JZX running a 2J. They seem to be busy, we'll let them be. Now this guy was killing it. He seemed like he really knew what he was doing, had experience on the track and stuff. Now you're obviously gonna see the guys working really hard. They've got to get their cars all touched up for tomorrow, especially if they qualified. And uh, I'm actually pretty pumped to see, there's a fair few line here of SR powered air chassis. It's really good to see that people are still running that kind of uh, platform, I guess, in a competition like FD. And goes to prove that sometimes just, you know, stick to what you've got and what you know is a really good mandate. This S15 is one of the female competitors here today, uh, Yukio, I think it's, if I read her name tag, it's Shiguro. I hope I didn't butcher that. <laughs> but yeah, it's really cool to see her out here. She's actually, I think the last three events or two. So she's still fairly new to it, but she's been doing pretty well today. I think she's gonna qualify and make it the top 32. Now, got this S15. Didn't seem to do too well, unfortunately. This JZX100 had a, a big problem this morning. It unfortunately crashed into the wall and didn't make it. This JZX100 is pretty cool. Sounds epic on song. Running a Greddy intake manifold. Nice Garrett turbo. Looks, looks like a... It's hard to see, but it kind of looks like a, a GTX 3076R. Didn't look like a 35R. So we're here at the Cusco booth to just check out this new A90 which is Bucky's car over here. He's a little bit busy, but he's given me full permission to check out his car up close and personal, which I think is super uh, epic. We get an up close look at a 2JZ crammed into this thing. And one other cool thing we get to look at is the new prototype Cusco angle kit that is on this. This thing throws down some serious angle and see how like the knuckle itself bolts onto the coil over like that very interesting way of doing things and it seems like it still has a front sway bar which is actually really cool a lot of guys are not running front sway bars on these very cool that brake kit's pretty sick too looks like he's running a, a gritty intake manifold fly-by-wire throttle body nitrous um, you can obviously tell that this is missing a water pump and that's because uh, everything's going to the back of the car 
and um, it, it's all pumped and stuff like that. Very common in competition cars these days. Nice big gritty turbo, was that a T88? I can't really read the number, but it's a big gritty turbo. <laughs> Here's another look at this angle kit from this side, and you can really get an idea of everything that's going on there. It looks like there's a lot of like Ackerman adjustment you can get there as well. Those adjustable plates there, and very interesting. And that whole hub, all the different bolting points here that go into the coil over. Looks like an entirely like billet piece. It's really exciting to see a company like Cusco coming out with something that I would dare to say is almost, it has to be Wisefab level. That's a lot of angle. And then coming around the back of the car, we might come around the other side. Coming around the back of the car here, you can see he's got his twin calipers there for his hydro setup. Everything looks really good in the back end. This is my first time being able to look up close in here. Very cool. All the suspension arms and stuff like that. This thing's interesting, I've never seen that. I wonder if that's to do with the sway bar. Very cool. I really do like this uh, body kit though in the wing. Kind of reminds me of like the old Supra look. Very cool. Just crossed over a line onto the other side now. We got the Buy Now Japan car. This guy was doing pretty good, throwing some big angle, SR powered. Looks uh, like a pretty simple, reliable setup. Nice Garrett top mount. Very cool. I think that's a Jun style old intake manifold for this thing. And it's non VCT as well. Wow, that's pretty huge. Very cool little setup. SR Zenki S14, one of my favorite S chassis. Good to see you once again. People out here with the SR. This guy as well, he had a pretty nasty crash this morning, but he managed to push all the rear of it out and get back out there and I think he's qualified. He did some pretty good laps. Fair bit of damage, but he was able to push it out. <laughs> That's all, man. But yeah, I think he he's gonna qualify and make it into top 32. Very cool. We got another SR powered S chassis. Getting hyped, guys. Once again, pretty simple setup. We've got an intake manifold, top mount, We're running 35 um, coil packs, injectors. Yeah, just looks like a, like, and still running a clutch fan, guys. SRs, man. Over here, we got False Thought and uh, the Sideways crew. And then wrapping around here, we got UAL. And he's killing it. <laughs> he was killing it today, literally on fire. Pretty much doing a burnout all the way up until initiation. His S15 is probably the most aggressive S15 I've ever seen um, in any type of drifting competition, USA or Japan. The way that the overfenders work and stuff like that is, it's just insane. Very cool car. I'll, uh, let's, let me just ask and see if we can get a closer look at it. So Yueo is an absolute boss, pop the hood for us. This engine bay has so much going on, it is so cool to get a look at this up close and personal. Very cool. And what's even more insane is like, just get an idea guys, to fit a VR38 uh, in here, so the, the GTR motor, look how high that sits compared to the strut tower, right? So the hood literally has to be skin. And that's what they went and did. They made an entirely dry carbon hood that is literally just a skin. It's so flimsy. Obviously, it's strong though because it's dry carbon. Just so this all clears and they can still have a hood. Like it's lit the engine is literally higher than the uh, what do you call this? Like the cowling for the wipers. Crazy. Twin intercoolers here. Got a Titan harmonic balancer on there. Very cool. And like I said, this car is super, super aggressive. The rear end is mental. Look how far out those fenders come. Nice fuel cell setup, rear mount radiator, of course, some nice dry carbon ducting. This is gonna be a theme you see a lot all over this car, just so much dry carbon. Very, very cool. Such a sick car. Such a privilege to also be able to get up close and check it out. I wonder what angle kit he's got under there. Looks like he's running PBM actually. Very sick. Didn't expect that. Such a cool car. 
So that pretty much covers the majority of the pit here. There's still a couple more cars and stuff like that that I won't be able to get to. But seriously, it's so cool being here behind the scenes, seeing everyone work hard, everyone's teams, what they put in to, you know, get their driver up and running in moments when there's a crash and things don't go according to plan, how they all pull together, get the car back out there, whether it's held together with duct tape or not, you know? It's just cool. I love being able to see this because it also means that I know what I'm gonna get myself into. If fingers crossed, I can get to FD next year. Heading back to the hotel now. I am exhausted. We got another early morning tomorrow. Um, Felso obviously he passed and is in qualifying. We had a look at the uh, uh, the battle ladder. It looks really good for him. I think he's going to probably end up in top 16, top 8, definitely. Um, it definitely seems like he's uh, unless something mechanically goes wrong or something like that. I think we're gonna see him up there for sure. It's gonna be very exciting. I'm pumped. So once we get to the hotel, I'll pick it up from there. So it's now the next morning. When I got back to the hotel after eating dinner, I was so wrecked. I couldn't even like comprehend anything. And it, I just, I tried to start editing and it just wasn't happening. So I'm sorry I ended up miss skipping a day just to take a day off and rest. I'm sure you guys will understand though, like back to back super early mornings and then staying in this hot sun all day, running around and yeah, it, it was definitely hectic. I probably should have drunk a few more fluids as well. That probably didn't help. But anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video and this uh, really nice insight into behind the scenes of what's going on uh, for FD Japan and a lot of these competitions. I know normally you only get to see kind of like the live stream and the guys competing, but you don't get to see this side of things. So I hope you enjoyed. Smash that like button, write us a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all in tomorrow's video for top 32, top 16, top 8, and... Uh, We'll find out who won. Peace out. Jamata.